Uh, hi guys and welcome back. As I promised you before, we we're going to do a little cooking today. Today we're in my kitchen. Uh, Leon, my sous chef, and my lovely wife are going to be helping me. Um, once again, we're going to be making some delicious food, so we're going to make crepes. I think you know what crepes are already. Right? We're going to make chicken crepes today, and if we have time, we'll make some banana crepes or anything like that. Crepes. Copy this down. I want you to write these down. And what we're going to do, I want you, as homework, to give me the method. You'll, you'll listen to me carefully. I'll say step one, step two, step three. Okay? So one egg, 150 milliliters of milk, 15 grams of butter, 60 grams of flour, salt, a pinch. Once again, like in classroom or any time like that, if a word is highlighted or darkened, either on the notes, on the lectures, or if I'm telling you an important word a couple of times, it's an important word, okay? And vegetable oil, as needed. As needed means, as we're cooking along, we're going to use a little more or less of that. Pinch, obviously, you know what a pinch is by now, okay? So, you got this down? If not, pause it, copy it, and then get back to me. Okay. So the mise en place that we have, right? We've got salt, flour, milk, and egg. What you're going to do is first break your egg. And whisk it. Beat it very well. When you're doing that, Turn my, my oven, my stove. Um, take the butter. Which just have to use the little 10 gram packets, which is good. So here's a half. And melt the butter, but don't cook the butter, just want to melt it lightly. Add a little flour at a time. If you add the flour all at once, it's going to make a big lump, and you really don't want to make a big lump. So you want to add it slowly, incorporate it well. I'm watching my butter melt slowly. I'm going to make a paste out of this. So I have a little extra flour in here that we're not going to use, but we're going to need some later. See, we're starting to develop a, a paste out of it, developing the gluten, so it's sticky. A good crepe is a, good crepe is a chewy crepe. Melting the butter, coat the pan, because we're going to use that for cooking the crepes. There we go. Now I'm incorporating all the flour, tapping it down to a nice thick paste with no lumps. Ah, yes. Turn off my stove. Swirl the butter around the pan, coat the pan. Then let it drip in. Now, once again, this is not that hot. You can see it's not that hot at all. You don't want to cook the butter. You just want to melt it lightly. And then just drizzle that in. The 
Don't wash your pan, leave it that way, because we're going to use that in 30 minutes. We're going to have to let it rest. R-E-S-T, rest. Shida, shida. Let it rest. So mix in that. Pinch of salt. Now I, I use ground salt. instead of Korean sea salt, because sea salt does have a little fishy taste to it, to me at least. Once again, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter that much. At class, we use sea salt all the time, but at home, I use, I use land salt. Just a pinch. Now, we take the milk, and little by little, everything's little by little. If you pour all the milk in at once, you have sloshing all over the place. So once again, slowly mix it in. And I didn't start the time on it. See now how, how it's coming. We're going to make it very thin, but what you want to do is make sure you add little by little. Scraping down the sides. Make sure there's no lumps. Gucha, English word? Ladle. Ladle. And what, I'm checking the nappe on this. Once again, it, on all the lectures we talked about before, these words I told you on the, the list, we're going to use a lot of class. So what I want to do is, is to get to a coat. This is a little thin. I mean, a little, a little thick. We could add a little more milk to this. I should have had a little milk, that's fine. Because this is going to rest for 30 minutes. Look at the clock now. 30 minutes, this will sit and rest. At least 20 minutes. At least 20 minutes, but as long as the better. Okay? That's going to be our crepe batter. This sits, what's going to happen is the flour is going to soak up. And it's going to get a little thicker again. We leave a little flour in case we have to adjust it. Once again, all flour and milk is never the same. So we're going to put this to the side. Clean up our station a bit. And we got the little cutting board. We're going to do chicken and mushroom crepes, okay? Let me get that recipe out. Okay, take a minute to write it down. We need 100 grams of chicken. We got well, obviously got more than 100 grams of chicken here. But once again, you guys know how to cut down chicken now because of the first video we had that. We're going to poach it and, and, res and reserve the liquid. I'm going to pull the chicken, which I'll show you how to pull it. Right? I'm going to chop some onion, pinch of thyme, six mushrooms sliced. I got uh, different style mushrooms, not, uh, you know, so many basak. Right? You know, kind of different ones. Right? A pinch of flour, once again, milk as needed, salt and pepper. Okay? Take a second, copy this down. Just freeze it. Mm. Okay, moving on. So you remember in the chicken stock recipe how we cut down the chicken and it's going to be basically the same way. When wiping a knife, wipe this way. 
not this way. Just one way, not, not this either. Just one way, safest way to do it. Okay, do you remember the chicken? I remember the chicken, oh, poor chickens. In Western cooking, we eat a lot of chicken. We eat an awful lot of chicken, that's for sure. Get this over there. Get this away. Now, we only need 100 grams of chicken, but we obviously we got a lot more than that, that's for sure. This is a nice sized bird, too. It's a big bird. We're going to use the, 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 the breast meat for this. So, once again, as we cut chickens in, in class before, we're going to do it just a little differently because we're going to be, we're going to need only the breast meat. Cut the legs. Cut down. Don't cut the meat, just cut the skin. Then at this point, you break. You can see the, the, the bone comes out. Cut down, cut around, cut over, put down. Let me get a plate for this. Same thing here, cut the skin, break the leg. You're not really breaking it, you're pulling it out from the, the hip joint. From the hip joint. All right, so no, no cracking, no cutting. Just very quietly, come nice legs. Oh, that looks good, delicious. Mm. Okay. The wing tips. Oops. Crack. A little crack there. These into our stock pot. That's going to be our poaching liquid. So the difference between stock and broth, we're not making a stock, we're doing a poaching liquid. And what we're doing is basically making a chicken broth to poach the chicken breast in. The, the wings, which we use for Anju or for Leon, my dog, he likes chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Now we're not gonna need the skin or anything like that, which you generally don't. So with your finger, you just pull it, put your finger through there and break it out. The reason why I suggest using your finger, if you're using the knife, there's a good chance you can cut the meat or cut yourself. So if you can do it by hand, by all means. Now, do you remember in the chicken stock what I said about the skin? We don't, we don't put chicken uh, skin in stocks for two good reasons. One reason, it has a lot of fat in it. And if you put a lot of fat in it, it's not that good. Oh, I need a little difficult time now. And my boy, Leon's around. This very gracefully. Okay, at this point, on the back here, you can see, you can see right here naturally, look at all this fat that's in there. You don't want fat in stock, you really don't. This is older. This is older chicken for sure. There's a lot of fat. The skin's really tight on it. There. This I'll cook up for Leon. What we're going for is the breast. So take the chicken. Put it, face it away from you, not like this. Here's the leg, wing, here's the neck, this is actually better. Right have the neck point towards you. Using the, this part of the knife, the low part of the knife, you find the, the keel bone, the center part. Not the meat, the center part. All right? You cut, be careful, keep your fingers away from it. Cut towards the end and then towards you. Using the tip of the knife, just cut gently down along the bone. Be very careful of doing this, okay? This is a much older chicken. You can see that. Yeah. 
maybe even a rooster, I'm not sure. A big bird. Do the same thing on this side. You know, just using the tip of the knife. I'm getting to this part now of my body, or of the bird's body. And just gently cut that off, gently cut that off. And there you go, you got some two nice breasts that we're going to use for the poaching liquid. Gonna remove the neck. In the stock pot. The wings, eh. Anjou, snacks, many things we have to do with it. A little extra skin here. Cut that off. Now we got basically just the car what we call a carcass, just the body itself. Take off any fat that you can get. This skin you could leave. Don't worry about that. Take the knife, cut in this way. And then cut down, you're going to kind of force the way through, and then break it. And you're going to see inside, leftover, gone, kidney, something in there. I'm going to step over to the sink. I'll be right back. I'm going to step over to the sink, wash this off. Oh, okay. Anyway, what I'm doing is washing this off here. Make sure you rinse it quite well. Be careful of dripping chickens. Remove any extra fat that's back there. There's a lot. This is a very old chicken. This is a very, very when they have a lot of fat back here. This is called K and L fat. You don't need to know this, but once again, kidney and lumbar fat. Old chickens, old people, old everything, get a lot of fat back in that area. Now this part you gotta kinda of just muscle your way through. Not, not attractive. You could cut it with a knife if you have a hard time with it, but you have gotta break the bones. Once you break the bones, it's easy. Into our poaching liquid. All right, put that over here. What I have back here is an inductive burner. Induction, all electronic. You might even have it at home. It's wonderful because it boils, boils very, very fast. That's for sure. Okay. I'm going to take. This. We're going to only need the breast today. We don't even need all those breasts, but I'm also cook it for lunch. This I'm going to wrap and put into the refrigerator. Should I pause? Wrap that up, put that in the refrigerator, and then we'll start. Hi guys, back again, like I said, we took a little break. Leon, my sous chef, and I had a cup of coffee, take a little break. We're not letting the, the y'all go take it easy, sit, sit down. He's a good boy, no pork. Pork? No Over here, right? What I got going on here is the, the broth. It's, I brought it to a boil, now it's, now it's simmering. Like I said, the inductive is very fast. I put the extra chicken parts in there. I don't know if you can even see it. Uh, the legs and stuff, because that's going to be for, for dinner tonight. So, once again, what we do is now shallow poach. We're going to Take some onion, I told you about the term concusse, I'm saying concusse means rough cut, just cut into large pieces, into the fry pan, a little pepper, no salt, You could put tonguchu in there. You could put anything in there. I got a little dry thyme, which we use in both recipes. Just a, just a pinch. Then I take the breasts and lay them in there gently. Put 
and then ladle some broth over the top. Try not to get any fat or bones or anything in there. This is poaching or shallow poaching. Either way you could use you could use the term, but what you want to do is cover it. Bring it over to you guys again. Close a look at it. Right? They're just swimming in there. They're not floating that much. Okay. I'm going to let that un simmer that low heat until until they're done. When they're done, we'll have to take a look at it. Okay. While that's going on, which will take a little while, we're going to make the crepes. I got this from my mother-in-law. It's great. I, I, you know, she gave it to me. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but my day it, it worked real well. You got a paper towel, right? It's got oil as needed. We have butter in the pan, so that, that's once again a good thing. You could use butter all the time, but butter does burn, so you don't want to burn flavor on your crisps. Right? Just a light coating. The nonstick pans are good, but you do need a certain amount of oil in there to get a good browning. Let me check the consistency here. Consistency. That's another word that's on the list. Adjust consistency. That means the thickness. As this sat, the flour got a little thick. Oh, oh it is very thick, actually. See, it, it's got a little thicker. I'm going to add just a, a little milk to that. Because a crepe should be thin. It's a pancake, yes, but it's a thin pancake. Now, the first one always comes out funny, usually. How much to add? You have to guess the first time. You have to guess the first time. So I'm going to use one ladle see where, where, where it takes me. This is a big pan, too. So it looks like one ladle is fine. Slowly roll it around. Try to make it as even as possible, especially along the edges. I'm shaking a bit. It looks fine. Looks like a little more than a ladle. This, is, this like I said, is a fairly large pan. Turn this up a bit. Now you need something wood, not wood, for these type of pans. I'm gonna move my chicken to the inductor. The inductor, right? These inductive oven uh, stoves are very, very nice. Now I'm gonna. So you can see the steam coming up, turn it down a little. And just break it down from the side, just scrape it down from the side. So the first one's always the most difficult one. I'm going to get a big plate here. Now, once the edges start cooking, you should be able to bring it up a bit. And a little while longer. Turn this up. Once again, with any chicken product, right, or anything really, you want to bring it to a boil. Boil first, then simmer. So I turned this all the way up. Let this get up to a nice, nice hard boil. Stick to the bottom. You can see why it's starting to brown around the edges, sticking a little. I don't know why, it shouldn't really be sticking. A little more. Should I pause? 
No, no, we're, we're going with it. We're going with it. We got this down to a boil. Turn it down to the simmer. Okay, we're going to take a pause for a second while this, everything gets ready. Hold on. 